Hey adventurers, welcome to Mexico. We decided to visit the Yucatan for a short weekend to see what we could find. Here is a black-tailed spiny iguana. This is the first thing that we're gonna see, but you know what? I'm sure that there's a lot more to find out here, so let's get going. Okay, this spot is kind of cool. We've got a bunch of these black-tailed spiny iguanas. This is a pretty big one. There is another. Uh, if we come just over here, we've got a third. And in fact, oh, he's, he's crawling into a little crevice there. In fact, if we really look, I've got even a couple more over there. This spot just seems to be a favorite for these guys. These big iguanas like this are known to be found in hot and dry areas. Uh, that's very different from the green iguanas uh, that are often seen in places that have a lot of water. Um, and I think I disturbed this guy, um, but he'll find a new spot. Look at how big he is. I mean, he definitely is making himself look big and angry. Well, we'll let him continue his, uh, his sunbathing. I think this one is probably a female. And that's cool. Bye-bye. Natural history guys, guides, and I found you a snake. Where is it? Right here. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> this here, going up like that, that is a little termite pathway. And in fact, I broke off the little top here just so we could take a closer look. And you can see all the termites inside and they're actually repairing it. So I broke it off um, like 15 minutes ago and uh, they've almost, they've made a lot of progress. Um, I'm sure if I come back in an hour, it'll be completely closed again and, uh, and they'll be back to doing their, doing their thing. <laughs> Check out this Gawati. He is just sleeping above somebody's window. Imagine uh, coming out of there and startling that guy. That would be quite a fright. All right, come take a look at all of these coatis here. These are white-nosed coatis or quotamundis. And you can see this is a big tribe of them. Now, unfortunately, this is at my hotel resort and they're eating cat food. In fact, I can see them at the little cat stand there because they have some feral cats here, which I don't quite understand for an eco lodge. Um, now, they're also very good climbers. You can see a couple of them in the trees there. These are very closely related to the raccoons that we have in the United States. But one of the major differences is that they're uh, diurnal. So they're active during the daytime versus the ones that are active at night, the nocturnal ones. So they're pretty abundant. You can see them everywhere. There's a good chance that uh, a lot of these um, kawadis are probably females. The males tend to be solitary. They, they live alone. Maybe there'll be like two together. And so like on the property, we'll see one or two. But usually when you have a big group, it's mostly females, maybe one male and, and a handful of, of younger males. But since there's an abundance of food here, uh, it might be a slightly different dynamic. You can see we've actually got all ages here. Um, I see uh, right there is a pretty tiny one next to maybe a, a mother, I'm not sure. So, uh, there's like 50 or so here. It's pretty incredible. Um, but I guess, you know, it's pretty easy to establish a big population when, um, when they're feeding them out here. So cool to see. We've got more to look for. So follow me. Oh my goodness. What happened? What? Look at that little guy. What is he doing here? Yeah, going around oh. Well, this is this is not a sea turtle. It's not. No. Wait, what is it? This is this oh, is going to be a fresh air, uh, a freshwater turtle. So oh, okay. probably another Mesoamerican slider that we've seen before. So I don't know where he's going. But I wanted to show you a little closer that little turtle that Tatiana found. Now, like I mentioned before, we are at the ocean, but this is not a sea turtle. This is a freshwater turtle, a Mesoamerican slider. Um, you can see a little bit on the back. You might be able to see those circles. They'll get more orange as uh, he or she gets older. Um, what an amazing turtle. We're, I, I mean, I don't know if he was buried in the sand here because they do, you know, they, they, they dig uh, holes to lay their eggs and maybe he just popped up recently. Um, he looks very, very young. You can see on the, on the bottom there, the, the shell doesn't look like it was 
uh, it looks it looks very very new. Uh, let's just say so. Excellent to see this little uh, non non ocean turtle at the ocean. So cool. All right. Well, we're gonna put this guy. We put him right back in the sand where he was. A little peculiar, but I think he'll make it out all right. Hopefully, I'm a little worried that a person might step on him, but this is where he was. All right, it might be a little difficult to see, but behind me right up there is a Mexican parrot snake. Now these snakes are diurnal, so that means at nighttime, they're gonna move up into the low vegetation like this to find a place to sleep. And so he'll be here all night. And so if I wanna come back and get more footage, it'll be really easy to find. Now, why are they called parrot snakes? Well, that is because of their beautiful coloration. They have all these iridescent greens and browns with them. And if you can get a closer look, you'll see that it really shines really bright and it might remind you of the coloration that we see in many parrots. So that is what this guy is doing here. Now uh, he is mildly venomous but I think it's kind of like a garter snake you know it's not likely to affect humans very much but since he's sleeping and probably found a really nice place we're gonna leave him be and just let him get a good night's rest so that way he can go look for lizards and frogs in the morning. So at night, a lot of lizards will get off of the ground and move up to the trees to find places to sleep, like this guy right here. So this is a nice sized brown anole. They're not native here. And it looks like he may have been woken up by me coming through, but he has found uh, this leaf to, um, to go to bed on and, and hopefully he'll stay away and be a little difficult for predators to get to him. Of course, if something does come up the tree, it'll make a lot of movement, wake him up, and he'll have a chance to jump off and get away. The Mexican parrot snake we saw earlier is probably going to be on the lookout for little anoles like this to eat, because uh, I don't think there's very many frogs out, so these guys are on the dinner menu. Okay, I want you to take a look in here. Tatiana spotted this. It is just the tail of a black a spiny tail iguana and he kind of looks stuck but i guess that is where he is choosing to spend the night and sleep trying to be tucked away from any predators although <clears throat> honestly i don't think he's picked a very good spot luckily there aren't any big predators out here to eat him so he'll be perfectly safe but kind of funny to see him like that with uh with his tail sticking out all right, well, it is nighttime now, and so there are creatures starting to come up. We finally have some of those nocturnal raccoons. Um, I believe these are uh, the same type that we have in the United States. I can't remember the full species name, but, you know, raccoons. I think there's two of them. Yep, there's a, the there's a second. So it's nice to see they're coming down. Probably, oh, there's a third. Uh they're going to be looking for things to eat um they're they might be gonna try to catch some fish or some shrimp in the water um so it's neat to see these guys out at night on the hunt All right, this pond is definitely being active here is a green heron that is actively on the hunt definitely for some some fish and uh let's see who knows what else is waiting okay it is about seven in the morning. The sun just come up and here we go. Look at that. Oh, no, 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 don't run away. All right, so this snake, I'm a little unsure if this is a coffee snake or a variable coral snake. One of them is harmless. The other one can be quite dangerous. So we're gonna take a bit more of a look before we figure out what it is. Look at that. Now you may know that coral snakes are venomous. They are lampids, and so their venom uh, is very potent. Whereas the red coffee snake is non-venomous. Look at that tail, look at that coloring. It's got some iridescence on it too, it's very pretty.
All right, so this snake behind me, you might, here, let me get a little bit closer. If you can see him down there moving along the side, this is a variable coral snake. Now I wasn't completely sure because the red coffee back snakes look very similar. All right, he might escape. Oh, he's going, he's going out. So this is gonna be the last bit of footage that we get of him. But like I said, this is a variable coral snake, very, very similar to a non-venomous snake that's in the area. So we needed to be a little bit careful until we figured out what it was. But I think some of that identifying field marks are gonna be that little black and yellow on the tail. It's one of the ways that we can differentiate this and the other snake. And so, but yeah, it's, uh, there it goes. Oh, we got some spider monkeys here. Usually we see them in the trees, but today they are walking on the ground. Kind of goofy looking, but there they go. I'm gonna try to follow them. We've got an agouti here, and I've seen a couple of these guys been running around early in the morning and late at night. They've been pretty skittish, so it's nice to see this guy is just chilling out. This is a rodent, and um, they have a very funny, cute locomotion because uh, it's very, very bouncy. But looks like he's just enjoying breakfast, and uh, we've got uh, more things to look for, so we'll leave him be. Yeah, so this property has been pretty nice seeing things like those agoutis. There's spider monkeys everywhere. There's lots of coatis. I showed you earlier that they, that they do feed them, though. Um, but last night I had a paca, a lowland paca, which is a, another another rodent similar to the agouti, except a little bigger and has white spots on it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage. It bolted as soon as I saw it. Um, but, like, there's some pretty cool things to find uh, out here. Uh, on this property so who knows there might be something else around the corner we'll just have to wait and see all right now if you look this is the leaf where that parrot snake was last night and it's a pro tip to come back to the same spot that you might see a snake because oftentimes they'll have their favorite spots and they'll use it again and so if you look up there i think you can see it there we have the mexican parrot snake again it has just chosen a different leaf and it is really cool. Now, I think this is probably the last thing that we are going to see on our adventures out here in Mexico. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. I'm Greg Schechter. This is Schechter Natural History, and we'll see you in the field.